everyone. Welcome back to Bible Talk Time. We have a very special lesson today. So grab your Bible and open it to Luke chapter two. After our lesson, I'm headed out to a party because my friend had a baby. Here's the birth announcement that I got in the mail. Isn't he so cute? His name is Jacob Daniel. I'm so excited that he's here. You know, in our culture, when a baby's born, we often send out a birth announcement in the mail, and then we have a party. At today, I'm taking him this soft, soft blanket. I know that he will love it. He'll get all wrapped up, and he'll be so soft and warm. We've been learning about a special baby that was coming. People had been excited for not just a few months, but for hundreds of years for this baby to come. Remember, God had said, someone is coming to bless the whole world. Last time we learned that an angel visited Mary and Joseph. We learned that God put a baby in Mary's belly. It was the son of God. And today, we'll learn about that birth. Here's a picture of Mary and Joseph, and they're taking a journey. Let's open up our Bibles to Luke chapter two, and we'll find out where they're going and why. Luke chapter two, follow along with your finger. Let's read in verse one. In those days, Caesar Augustus, he was the big king, the big emperor, issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. A census, that means they wanted to count all the people. He wanted to know how many people were in his kingdom. So um, everyone went to his own town to register. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth, Nazareth in Galilee to Judea. He had to travel a long way to get to Bethlehem, the town of David, because Joseph belonged to the house and the line of David. And they had to go back to where their family was from. So Joseph and Mary took this trip, even though Mary was about to have a baby. You know, today we can travel easily. It was about 70 miles. And we can do that very easily in a car. Very quickly, it might just take us maybe an hour, a couple hours, that's it. But it took them three days probably. They had to walk or ride a donkey. It must have been a pretty hard trip, especially for Mary since she was ready to deliver that baby. Well, when they got to Bethlehem, there were lots of people there because everyone had to come, remember? to their hometown. So here's a picture of what it might have looked like in the city of Bethlehem. Lots of people, lots of talking. You know, there are a lot of houses. There are inns, places to stay. But by the time Mary and Joseph arrived, there was no room for them to stay. Now you would think that since she was having a baby that would become the king of kings, you would think they would be allowed to stay in some big palace or something. No, there were no rooms left for them. So Mary and Joseph had to stay in the stable. Now you guys, a stable is not a place for people. It's a place for animals. It may have looked like a barn, it may have looked like a, a cave or a part of a building, but it was for the animals. And that's where Mary and Joseph had to stay. Let's read what happened. Luke chapter two, read the wonderful story with me of what happened next. Look at verse six. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in the manger 
because there was no room for them in the inn. She didn't lay him in a soft, cushiony crib or bed. There was no bed like that for the newborn king. He had to sleep in a manger, in the, yeah, in the manger. You guys, a manger was the feeding trough for the animals. <laughs> it wasn't soft and cushy. It was filled with food and maybe some hay, but that's where she had to lay him. Well, while this was happening, something else was happening outside the town of Bethlehem. Out in the countryside, out in the, among the hills, shepherds were taking care of their sheep. I like this picture because it shows us how dark, how lonely it was to be out there taking care of sheep. You know, they didn't have street lights. They didn't have flashlights. This happened 2000 years ago. It was dark and the shepherds were out there all alone, just watching their sheep. When suddenly something happened. Suddenly in the sky appeared an angel. <gasps> Look at that, an angel appeared. And he certainly brought the light because the Bible says that he had the light of the glory of God. He was all shiny and bright. I'm sure that it was actually very frightening for the shepherds to see this. But the angel spoke to him, to them. And here's what he said. Read along with me in verse 10. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. That baby that had been told about for hundreds of years, he was here. And the shepherds learned about it first. The angel said, go to the town and look for a stable and you will find a baby wrapped up in cloth and laid in the manger. And then something else happened. Those shepherds kept looking up and suddenly not one angel, but a company of angel, a host of angels appeared, bright and shiny, that probably filled the whole sky with lights. You know, we're used to just flicking a button and plugging something in and lights come on, but not for them. Hundreds, maybe thousands of angels filled the sky with bright lights shining. A whole company, a whole host, I don't know how many, maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand, maybe a million angels, I don't know. But not only were they bright and shiny, but they were singing. They were singing about glory to God in the highest. You guys, we can push a button and play music, but they couldn't do that. The sky was filled with bright lights of angels everywhere. And the sky was filled with the sound of praising God and singing about glory to God in the highest, the Son of God that would bring peace to the earth and peace to men, that would take our sins away. Oh, it must have been so excited. Oh, unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And you guys, the angels went away. They went back up to heaven. And then the shepherds did just what they had told them to do. They had said, go find the baby. He will be wrapped and he will be laid in a manger, right? 
And that's what they did. The shepherds ran to see the baby. They were so excited to see the baby that people had been waiting for for hundreds of years. You know, the Bible says that when they left, that they told everyone they saw about the baby. They told them, the Savior has been born. The Messiah, the Chosen One, he's here. People probably were asking them, well, what's his name? And they would have had to say, well, I don't know. Because in ancient times, babies didn't get their name right away. We name our babies as soon as they're born, maybe even before they're born. <laughs> but in ancient times, they waited for eight days to name the baby. And that's just what Mary and Joseph did. Look with me back in Luke chapter 2 and verse 21. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus. The name that the angel had given him before he was even conceived. Jesus was here. What an announcement. Angels, lights, shepherds. You know, I thought it would be fun to just make up some modern day announcements. Maybe if I were making up a modern day birth announcement, maybe it would look something like this. It would have angels on it and it would say, good news of great joy today in the town of David. He, a savior has been born and he is Christ the Lord. Or maybe my announcement would look something like this. It would remind us that the prophets had said, unto us, a child is born. It really did happen. He was born and he was born the son of God, the forever king. Maybe it would look something like this one. I would put a manger on it and I would say, he's the Messiah, the Christ, the chosen one. The important thing is that that baby that we had waited so long for, the baby that God had promised through the centuries, he's here. He is Emmanuel, God with us. I can't think of a happier day. I can't think of a happier announcement. Jesus had been born. Come back next week and we'll learn more in the next Bible Talk Time.